Hello and welcome to Antipost Advice. As usual, I've been joined by Ben Hutton of the Betting Desk, our Antipost expert. And we're going to have a look at one of the big betting races of the entire calendar year. That's the Hennessy at Newbury on Saturday. Uh, ben, at the moment we have uh, Rocky Creek and Invictus battling it out at the head of the market. Deservedly so, do you think? Um, absolutely. Um, Invictus has been off for, well, it'll be 651 days. Um, but he beat Bobsworth over three miles um, when he last ran in February 2012. Um, and based on that form, a mark of 145, he could be way better than it. So if, if he's as good as he was, he'll take a lot of beating. But that's a big question mark after his time off. Um, so he's, he's possibly best left alone at the price. Um, Rocky Creek seemed limited as a novice, but um, a mark of 151. Um, he has the potential to improve upon that. Um, he's Paul Nichols' big hope. So seven-year-old could be more to come. I'd be tempted by him, but again, others do appeal more at the prices. Before we move on to those others, neither Invictus, Rocky Creek or the third favourite, our father, have had a run so far this season. It's a big ask to win this first time out, don't you think? It is a big ask. We're, we're talking about trainers like Paul Nichols and Alan King for Invictus and, and Rocky Creek. I'm, I'm pretty sure Rocky Creek will be ready to go. Um, Invictus, Alan King will deserve a tremendous amount of credit if, if he manages to get him to win after 651 days off. But it's certainly not out of the question. With our father, the, the key to him could be fresh. His best run last year came first time out. And on that form, um, he's respected. Not so much on his other form, but if, if he reappears in the same form as he did last year, then he'd, he'd certainly have a chance. OK, before we move on to those you think can't win, let's have your two against the field. Uh, the first one is um, Cloudy2, who's a, a 20 to 1 shot. Um, progressed gradually last season, won some good races at Haydock. Um, often shaped over 2 mile 4, 2 mile 5, as if, as if this Hennessy trip would really suit him well. Um, made a very pleasing reappearance in the, the Colin Parker Memorial at Carlisle. It's a race that's thrown up some good winners. And I, I think there's more to come from him this year. He's uh, on a mark of 150. I think the step up in trip will, will get even more out of him. And uh, he's a really exciting horse for the Smiths. Cloudy 2, your first selection. And your second? Um, opening batsman's my, my, where I'm going for the second one. He, he's been pulled up the last twice. Um, he jumped badly and um, didn't was never really travelling at Ascot last time. But um, Harry Fry's going to put cheek pieces on him. And if that has a positive effect, then he's, he's handicapped to, to run well if he's back at his best form. Um, his, his defeat of rolling aces at Kempton in February um, was a really good win. He's only £6 higher and, and that victory suggests he's capable of being better than his current mark of 146. So at 25 to 1 with the cheek pieces going on, um, I like that price. So they're the two to concentrate on, but what about any wild outsiders? There are a couple of wild outsiders. It's it's a it's a wide open race, and if if anything stands out at a price, I'll I'll always favour that over the those ones towards the, the head of the betting. Um, one of those is Terminal. Um, like opening batsman, he, he hasn't shown much in his last two starts, but um, he was fifth in the RSA Chase despite making a, a really bad mistake four out, and he stayed on well. Um, the step up in trip in the Hennessy I think will suit uh, him really well. And if he's back in form, let's see what the price is. He's a 33 to 1 chance, so that's tempting. The other one is Lock Bar. Um, won really easily on his only start at Newbury. Um, pleasing enough reappearance when second. And um, yeah, I just think he's been underrated a bit. He's, he's 40 to 1 with Ladbrokes, 33 to 1 generally. And that looks a nice price too. Let's just have a quick word now on some of those you don't like uh, who are shorter in the betting. Starting with Hadrian's approach. Um, Hadrian's approach was very tempting. Um, as as with all of these, it's it, it's always the price. Um, having looked at his form and then having seen his price of ten to one, I thought he ideally he would have been a bit bigger. Um, he looks all about stamina. Um, he made mistakes in the RSA chase when third. Um, pleasing reappearance when second over an inadequate trip at Kempton. It'll be ideally suited by the trip and he, he could run a really big race. It's just, I was eyeing him up as a bit of a dark horse, but he's, he's trained by Nicky Henderson, so he's never going to be a dark horse. And at, at 10 to 1, I prefer the, the prices of the ones I've gone for. Lord Windermere? Lord Windermere, he's, um, well, packed with stamina, trip should suit. Um, mark of 154 for winning, possibly not the best RSA chase. So, yeah, therefore taken on at around 10 or 11 to 1. 
Kotenko? Tempting again, but um, he's on a mark of one five seven, and if he's to win this, he's going to have to be a Gold Cup contender. Um, he could be, um, but it's more likely he's not. And finally, one I know that Tom Siegel is very keen on, price-wise is Tom Siegel, of course. Merry King. Merry King, another one I couldn't rule out. Um, the, the only problem is we're looking for really, really progressive sorts in this, and um, Merry King's been beaten in his last four races. He, he has been improving in defeat each time, but wh whether he's got that ability that makes him massively superior to his marks, and another point, he's a six-year-old, so he could find the improvement, but... Um, yeah, there's a lot of these I can't rule out, but others appeal more based on their form and their prices.